Welcome to Cinema Savants, your home for all your movie and TV news, with Todd Vandenberg, Lee Val, and Rob Steele. And coming up in this week's show, that's an incredible amount of money. Buffy might be changing her name, and Alex Trebek himself is in jeopardy. All this and more, but first, a bit of show news. I know we we split into two separate shows, one for news, one for reviews, and the reviews is supposed to be Thursday, and yet we're moving it to Friday, and it's all Lee's fault. You're welcome. Because he's got a football <laughs> show. It's on the network now. Let's see. Woo! Tis a thing. The Seattle a Seahawks thing. show. Tune in for that. It's on Thursdays. Yes. The review Thanks show to will all be on those Friday. Three listeners. Yeah, three listeners. I appreciate it. Thank you. Checks in the mail. <laughs> Rob, Todd, and Ted. That's it. Thank you. As opposed to the check being sent to Movie Pass, yes, which is mine. just not. Things are going bad when Todd cancels it. Yeah, I canceled. Um, okay, we've we've talked about Movie Pass, and I've been a big supporter and been very critical of all the. He keeps trying. Uh, he really does. Anti Movie Pass things because predicting doom and gloom went because they were predicting doom and gloom months ago. Well, it turns out they were right, but I didn't really see much point in kicking it when it still had a chance. So now it's become this fun little game of, of, of Russian roulette because you open up Movie Pass and you look to see, uh, for instance, two days ago there were no showings whatsoever available on Movie Pass in my area at any of the theaters listed. None. Which isn't really accurate because, of course, they were playing movies. They just weren't available on Movie Pass. Um, a couple days before that, every film, and I had talked about this last week, every film that, w- that was available had the f- either the 351 or the 401 surcharge. Even the 1120 AM showings for really small independent films, which certainly were not going to have big crowds. So earlier today, I had checked the, the listings, and oddly enough, the afternoon screenings of all films were not available. But the evening, a couple of evening showings were, which doesn't really make a lot of sense because those are going to be the, the bigger draws. But for whatever reason, they decided, oh, we'll make those available. Well, I've opened it up again, and now those are no longer available. So uh, I've gone through four different theaters, and nothing is available at any of these th- screenings on MoviePass. So I'm, I have canceled it. But it's still available to me, if, assuming anything would work, up until August 10th. And it's not like, oh, they're not going to give you anything because you canceled the thing. It was working before. So it's apparently they've run out of money again. No, they uh, haven't. It, they they haven't run out of money because they charged me twice this month. So they're ah, oh, you know, awesome. They awesome. now have nine ninety five charges twice. So they're well, making their money. I should be able to see one film on your nine ninety five. Then I'm very upset. I'm going to write them. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, there's there's no way you can stay in business with this kind of... Is it going to work? Am I going to be able to get to see anything? What, it, it, it's and, and their official statement is, well, not all films at all showings will be available at every time. Like, literally, you're just playing roulette. It's like, okay, I have no idea if I'm going to be able to see a movie. I'll just try right now and see maybe the 720 showing is available. Maybe you won't get a surcharge. Maybe you won't. I mean, oh, they have handled meant, this. I think you meant 420 showing. 420 showings are always available. This, they, they've handled this so, so poorly. <laughs> they deserve to shut down. This is after they had a reverse stock split and their, their stock price plummeted immediately within a week. So uh, it, it's, it's really unfortunate because it was wonderful while it lasted. But obviously their vision for how this was going to make money was incorrect But they, because they never seemed to put that into effect anyway. And they clearly didn't have an idea of how they were going to keep things going, and they really mishandled everything in the past month. I mean, it's just ridiculous to basically come out with statements saying, well, we're not sure what we're going to be able to offer you. Okay, well, there's really no reason for anyone to sign up for it now, is there? If you don't know what films are going to be available, that's that's insane. Um, I am going to try the AMC A-list which is twice as much money, but probably actually will survive for a while because it's owned by the theater and it's just an internal draw. So it's a, like a loss leader form. Yeah. It's three movies a week, but three movies a week is probably pretty much okay for everybody. There's no restrictions on, Oh, I won't be, get to see mission impossible or I won't get to see 
anything at all this day is as if it was movie pass. It applies to 3D. It applies time. You know, blah 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 blah. blah. So uh, I'm sorry to see movie pass go, but the way they've handled their business in the past month has been atrocious. And yes, you guys still owe Lee 9.95. So so there. <laughs> You never know. They could still make a miraculous comeback somehow because Elon Musk will buy them. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but speaking of miraculous comebacks, and this just now came across. I didn't put it in the show notes because there wasn't time. CBS has just announced that for their new their, – well, it's not their new anymore. Their all-access streaming service, a second Star Trek series. This one is going to be, it's a spinoff of one we've already got. Patrick Stewart is coming back as Captain Picard. And he, it's Captain Picard, the spinoff, basically. What happens to Captain Picard after the next generation? So at this point, they can just call it the Star Trek streaming channel. Because actually, they that's could. their third, because they've, they've got the anthology shows listed, unless they've scrapped that and decided to go with the the ongoing adventures of Picard, but that's, uh, I, I'm not that all, all that fired up about it, but I know a lot of people will be, I mean, I'd like to see, pa- I love watching Patrick that's, Stewart. That's, so, that's a cool, that's a cool move. It is. I, I'm, at least I'm actually, start. I'm actually disappointed because you started that with, don't call it a comeback. I was really hoping LL Cool J would be Captain Picard. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping that's what you were leading up to. Actually, he's playing counselor Troy. <laughs> <laughs> He actually oh. does act. He'd actually be pretty good. He at actually, that yeah. I, I, no, Uncle Jay is good. Yeah, I like he him. Is. I enjoy it. Um, other things to enjoy, and th- this has potential. There is a DC animated movie that wasn't on the schedule, Ooh. but it doesn't matter. It's coming out anyway, October 9th. Uh, it's a full-length Constantine animated movie called City of Demons. Which, which is cool. I, I'm interested. Uh, still has Matt Ryan doing the voice of John Constantine, who I thought did a spectacular job in what little live action series there was. Uh, you guys interested? I'm interested. I, th- I think this will be good. I'm, I'm definitely interested, and I think that's really interesting that they they kept Matt Ryan uh, because. That I, will, I think all that, the DC people wanted the live action series to keep going, but no one will do it which is annoying it's more exciting because it's animated instead of dc trying to make a film so that's true (laughs) that is true that is true maybe elon musk will will take over (laughs) which when you mentioned elon musk and movie pass he actually was asked about that and and he had one word reply in social media which was no no (laughs) yeah (laughs) that is cool i like constantine and matt ryan doing the continuing of the voice is excellent now here's a piece of DC animated news that may or may not be good. It, 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 it's a, a point of view thing. Teen Titans Go came out. And it's gotten really good reviews. And, well, kind of. On Metacritic, at least. On Metacritic. The two Urban, people Urban who Meyer gave it a great review. He said he didn't see any violence at all in the film. What? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> there's a post credit scene that has gotten a lot of people excited, except we're not really sure where it's going. Uh, Teen Titan or Titans Go is a really stupid reboot of the Teen Titans series that was started around what 2000 or something, and had a very it had a really weird art style to it, but the storylines were good, and my kids loved it, and that version of the Titans showed up at the end of Teen Titans Go and said, we may have found a way back, leading people to think, oh, a sixth season that's going to come out on the DC streaming network. You guys have any ideas on this, or have you heard anything other than what I've heard? I have not heard that. That would be cool. I, yeah. I'm i in favor. Anything of Patton Oswalt is attached to with, with the animated voice is good. I'm excited about Patton Oswald was attached? Well, he is to the movie. I'm assuming he will be to the show. Is he animated? 
Nick Cage Cage. was in the movie, but I kind of doubt that they'd bring him along for the TV. Well, but Cage is different. Cage is different than Oswald. He does a lot of voiceover stuff. So okay. Anyway, uh, other one bit of DC news, and this is actually good news. Uh, They announced something on the Batman movie, in that the script is almost done, and that's not the good news. The good news is Matt Reeves says it is definitely, absolutely not another Batman origin story. Which is great news, yeah. That is spectacular news because we don't need another one. We've only had, what we've had 10 Batman movies and nine of them have been origins. I mean, that's just. <laughs> Seems that way. Yeah, and I was, I was not at all thrilled that they were going to do a Batman year one. It's like, no, we don't no. need that. Oh, don't so, that. that. That is indeed excellent news. Um, so maybe they're starting to head in the right direction. This is me not holding my breath. Anyway. <laughs> moving on to Marvel, who had a little bit of news this week, and it comes out of Sony, but it has to do with the MCU anyway. It's another Spider-Man spinoff movie, this time starring Craven the Hunter who I thought was a cool character, and I was really hoping he would be in the second Homecoming movie, or whatever they're calling it. Um, so is Craven worthy of a, a movie to himself, and if, are they going to keep taking Spider-Villains and giving them spin-off movies, leaving the Spider-Man movies to have who in them? Sure sure seems that way. That's... That, I mean, I I really like the character, and I, I, I can kind of see it's like, okay, it might be an interesting movie, but it, it certainly would be more interesting if this was a Spider-Man movie with Craven, and especially when the this one is he's on a world jaunt. Hello, kind of seems it would make sense. This would be a great time to put in Craven the Hunter, but well, maybe I, put him in and then spin him off at Sony. Maybe. Yeah, it's hard. And, and maybe they are, and that just hasn't come out about... Uh, uh, Tom Holland hasn't gotten that part of the script, so he hasn't been able to ever tell everybody, oh, Craven the Hunter's <laughs> in this one, too. That's true. Uh, yeah, I mean, kind of like, that's a cool character, but yeah, does he really need his own movie? That's just kind of... Sony's making some odd choices. Well, you know, Silver Sable and Black Cat getting a spinoff. Um, Venom, I can see, because he's popular enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Craven, Craven would need to. I, I would think Craven would have to be in an MCU movie, or at least a Spider-Man movie, before you spin him off. I, it, it, it just seems a little weird. It's it's odd. Um, kind of like Andy Serkis. He's a bit odd. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm full of segues today. I don't know why. You know, I wonder. You All mentioned that. I wonder if he's really odd, though, or if he's just like because he always plays these odd characters or CGI characters. He's probably the most normal guy in the he world if you is. ever met him. Uh, saw him on Colbert once, and he was seemed perfectly normal. And then until uh, Colbert went, "Can you read this as Gollum?" And then he hops <laughs> up in a chair and assumes the Gollum position. And that was excellent. Fefe. That was hilarious. That was wonderful. <laughs> um. Last week, we said that uh, his version of Mowgli was picked up by Netflix. Mm-hmm. Uh, now his version of Animal Farm has been picked up by Netflix. So Netflix is turning into the Andy Circus channel, <laughs> which actually I could probably watch that. That would be pretty cool. I was like, yeah, I'm OK with that. That'd be all right. Um, Interesting. I have not. I don't know. Have they even filmed any of this yet? I don't. I, I, don't I the only Animal Farm and George Orwell is my favorite writer ever. If people don't know that, but um, the only Animal Farms I've ever seen are animated. Like I've never seen a a live action Animal Farm. This one's supposed to be well CG motion. Right, right, right. Stop. Yeah. Capture that stuff. My my fear is uh, that Orwell when Orwell wrote Animal Farm, he was really writing in about. He he was a, he was a um, a socialist himself, but he really hated the way Soviet quote unquote communism had become communism because it wasn't. But my my fear is that a lot of people in today's day and age, with how we you know people believe in the Trumpisms and things like that, is that 
the book itself, whatever it's made into visually, will lose its effect because four legs good, two legs bad. People might be reading that into or watching it and being like, oh, yeah, so this is good. Yeah, Trump is right. And it's like it's the total opposite of that. So I'm just kind of curious of, as far as how people will – if it's actually made and, 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 and I'm sure with any circus involved, it will be something good. But I'm wondering if the interpretation will be read correctly by the people viewing it. A lot of people won't view it correctly because they, they don't, don't view reality. they don't view they don't view real reality correctly. So yeah. <laughs> but but I think for, that, for more of that, well, listen to the FWAT show. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that that I think doing it as a live action thing that would that's going to be creepy. Yeah, but in a good way. I think it's I think it could easily be now that we have the. The uh, you know CGI effects and and the production value we have it could easily be made into uh, a live action film. Yeah. I, I just just like you know Gollum, just like you mentioned, you know that mm-hmm. that character came off the screen as a real character, even though it wasn't. And, yeah. and I can see Animal Farm being the same way. And I mm-hmm. feel like the time is right to make it into some something like that. My again, my fear it just as an Orwell lover goes back to the fact as as far as George Orwell, if you were still alive. Um, viewing it and being like, mm, I'm not sure people are reading this correctly. That would be my only fear. But I, I think the production value is there to make it effective and good. I think it, it you know, it's got potential, and we'll find out once Netflix release Netflix releases it. Whenever that's going to be, there's not a date attached at the moment. Right, and and Renee Zellweger is attached to Snowball. I'm making that up. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Anyway, um, your segues are so bizarre. Anyway, <laughs> something that has come. There's out. no segue. It was just an no, observation. That's my point. Where it's the hell is he going with that? It was a bold no, move. It's an interject. That's all I do. You, you are the Mike uh, Greenberg of this show. I'm just interjecting. As I told my girlfriend, it's I like fell it, off the segue. What the hell? <laughs> There's a lot of stuff you guys talk about. And I'm like, I have nothing to do. And I'm like, I'm interjecting stuff that's uh, like this. And it's like <laughs> somebody out there, one person of the millions who are listening is like, oh, I get it. He, he, he. And that's the guy that lives in a cave. And it's like, that's my audience. But that's, we that's, love it that you listen. I, well, Me personally, thank you. I, I do listen to the show afterwards. <laughs> I think I'm horrible, but you guys are great. But I, I do yeah. laugh at my you're the guy who listens and laughs at the jokes. That's I'm it. the guy who listens. Is, In the cave. The, that's that's awesome. Movie oh, too. that's you. Oh, filled out the survey and everything. Thank you. Anyway, thanks, thanks, Ted, for listening. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of things that came out and, and apparently people listened to, The Incredibles 2 uh, became the fastest animated movie to hit the $1 billion mark. And I think only one of us actually went to see it. I saw it. I haven't seen it. See, that's my point. Um, but yeah, that's uh, impressive, actually. Uh, Disney's fifth animated, uh, the 18th ever billion dollar release, and third this year, only all three of this year's are Disney's with Black Panther and Infinity War. Because Disney needs the money for, for what now? For Anyway. To, to, to buy Fox. Back, to pay back George Lucas. Ah, for raping his Star Wars. That's another. I think he show. did that on his own. I think he self-raped himself on that before it was ever sold. This was a family show at one point, wasn't it? Anyway, um, <laughs> self-rape. I don't. I mean, that's a family thing. It's it not could, going. I'm not. Go, I'm not going any further with that. That's yeah, definitely like, a family thing because it's definitely within the family. I mean, it has to be by definition. That's right. Yeah. Hey, hey! Our president said his own daughter was hot, so I'm not going. Speaking of things that came out a long time ago, wow! <laughs> yeah, Todd mentioned this earlier. 2001: A Space Odyssey is coming to IMAX on August 24th for a week. That's exciting. It's going to look beautiful, but I'm still probably going to fall asleep. <laughs> exactly. I totally agree. It is beautiful. It's a great, it's a great film. It is the first time I saw it, but I don't want to see it again because exactly for that effect, I know there's going to be a oh, there's a whole lot of colors and sound. It's a filled glass section of the uh, film. I'm going to fall asleep during this. You it's, you two are are philistines. 
Thank I've you. only fa- I've only fallen asleep during it once. So <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It's is a really strange film, isn't it? Because I mean, it is beautiful, and it and it is in some in some ways, it's one of the greatest films ever. And yet, there are so many long, drawn out sequences. Uh, it's it's just a very strangely paced film. And by strange, he means slow. <laughs> very, very, very slow, yeah, very slow. Come I mean, of course, seems it, to move it, faster than this. Ooh, well, this was a lot. But uh, Seventh Sill is is slowly paced as well. But it's a great film. I just there's more stuff going. On. I, I, I two thousand one, yeah, I'm a Philistine. To me, it's like it's a great film for being a film. Maybe, maybe the same reason that when you see AFI's list, Citizen Kane is the the greatest film ever, and to me, it is the greatest film ever made as far as cinematic effect but a lot of people are going to view it and they're going to be like i'm not interested in this and that's kind of the way i feel about 2001 but for those people who do like 2000 i mean i like we all like it but yeah but yeah i agree not maybe not to the to the extent that you guys are saying but yeah it is it it, you can definitely fall asleep during this film but if you're ever going to watch it this is the way to watch it Absolutely. If, if you've on ever had the opportunity to see screen. it, what cave do you live in? Oh, wait, that's the person in the cave that listens to Lee. <laughs> anyway. that, that's me. I'm, 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 you know, this would be the this would be the way to see it the first time if you haven't seen it before. Because Similar it is to an experience. Another movie that's getting released for one night only on Thursday, September 27th. A high def version of the Transformers animated movie from 1986. Did mm. we need that? I don't think we needed that. Probably not. It was also depressing. They killed Optimus Prime. Um, spoiler. Yeah, no, it's not. It, the movie came out in '86. Most people who would go see it now weren't born then. You've had so? the opportunity. So you spoiled it for him. Yes, actually, you say you, you save them from watching some something I that did, really does not be, need to be in high def, because there's not going to be much of a difference between that and watching it on a VHS tape. Exactly. Um, oh, here's a segue for you. Okay. A really poor. <laughs> Two one. wheels and a gyroscope. I, I was just offered, and 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 Rob will like this, even though it doesn't help the show at all. But I am <laughs> I'm about to pick up a stereo from the 1970s that has an eight track, and, and you guys were talking about uh, VHS. So the only eight track I still have, and I'm being honest, is Fly by My Fly by Night by Rush. So this, uh, I'm going stereo. to kill you for this next time I see you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the eight track, the the people who are giving it to me, all they have is gospel. So the only thing I will be able to play on this eight track, besides the record, because it has, does have a record player, is Rush's Fly By Night. Just, uh, just which is a just great saying. album. Yeah, but VHS also, uh, as we mentioned, I think what last week or the week before, who has VHSs anymore? Who has eight tracks? Yeah. So, no, I'll, 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 I'll take you one slightly better. When I worked in radio, we used eight track a lot, and I still have several eight tracks that have me on it, and no way of transferring it to anything else, as well as some reel to reel stuff. I can't find one. That's of pretty nice. There. It's wow. They leave the there's a loot there's a loot there's a loot of 40 eight track tapes first thing that pops up on ebay 40 eight tracks ten dollars baby they're all gospel oh, yeah exactly what, uh, what are they i have no idea but it's from uncle steve's house of cool stuff so it must be good <laughs> it's billy ripkin sings <laughs> the second scary. basement blues no it's uh, worse it's uncle steve that, uh, that's the problem well, there's uh, let's see, there's Kansas. I know you love Kansas. There's Mandrill. There's Fog Hat. Uh, the, soundtrack, the soundtrack from Greece. Ooh, guys. guys. <laughs> do, do, we have a, do we have a movie show? Stories left. Can we finish? Billy Joel. Billy Joel, the Stranger. Anyway, yes. I'll take it. I'll take the Stranger. I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> Last week we talked about Norman Lear rebooting all his stuff from the 70s. See, there's a, that's as close to a segue as we're going to get. Ever. Um, He announced this week they are not remaking All in the Family. Absolutely not. And I said, good. Uh, I heard a bunch of reboot stuff this week, and I'm not going to talk about them because I don't care enough. But uh, I'll mention the list of uh, they're remaking them. And we know about the uh, Lord of the Rings TV series. They're remaking Bond, allegedly starting from the beginning. Superman starting over, allegedly. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. 
we mentioned Star Trek earlier in the show, although I had it on the list before Patrick Stewart said anything. Uh, mm-hmm. Sus- Suspiria, which I'm not sure I had heard of in the first place, an indecent proposal. Come on, that wasn't that long ago. Mm-hmm. No, that wasn't. Suspiria is Suspiria is a, a a one of the the great Italian horror films, and when it first came out, went with some friends because I'd heard wonderful things about it. And Wait, man, I thought, I thought that was a Phil Collins song. <laughs> so close. It's so, so close. But only so, if you listen to it on 8-track. They hated that movie. God, they hated that movie. Yeah. It's a uh, horrible thing is going on in a girl's school. So it's a probably, Elm Street. probably true life. But mm-hmm. so that's cool that there's a remake coming of Suspiria. Because it oh, didn't come out Donald two weeks Trump ago. Is the dean in that, in that movie. So. That was, totally makes sense. Yeah. Dean Warmer. <laughs> Finish out the show with this. A uh, bit of TV news. Alex Trebek. Oh, hold on. Who, Can I interrupt yes, you? You got yes, Buffy go on there. You got Buffy on the thing. Oh, huh? I missed the Buffy story, didn't I? Yeah, because Donna I'm is like sorry. totally waiting on the Buffy thing. Because I, I mentioned, hey, Buffy, they're, they're rebooting. Joss Whedon's involved. It looks like Buffy is going to be the, the actually lead is going to be African-American. So it won't be yep. Sarah Michelle Geller. So what, what do you have? It's on not going to be Buffy. They're, they're even talking about changing uh, the name of the character. So they're, I think friend. if you're going to reboot the, if you're going to reboot a series, this is the way to do it. You know, take the general premise, wipe everything out, get all new characters, but you know, keep the premise, but start completely over. Don't go. This is Buffy, and this is the redheaded girl, and this is Xander, and this is I don't know the <laughs> Angel name. and yada yada yada. Yeah. Thank you. I, I'm like I don't know any of the other. I think there was a guy named Spike. There's yeah. a guy named Spike. Yes. Yeah. Wasn't that an isn't that an ironic name for a vampire? Because that's how you kill them, isn't it? Mm, they're not all vampires, but but yeah, yeah. In that case, yeah. Well, he. I mean, he was though. He 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 was. Yeah. He was, Angel. Yes. Angel was also a vampire. So. Yes. Right. And then he went to work for the FBI with uh, mm. Zoe Deschanel's okay. sister. Lucky yes, guy. he did. Anyway, not the point. <laughs> that's that was a, that was the television thing, which leads back to. Alex Trebek leaving Jeopardy is that going to be weird because they're going to keep the show going depends on who takes his place I mean it if does, it's yeah. uh, he has net mentioned two people that he wants to do it Kevin Hart <laughs> you're not that far <laughs> off uh, one of them is Alex Faust who I had never heard of apparently he's the play by play announcer for the Los Angeles Kings okay which is that's, That's interesting. A, from out of nowhere pick. Yes, it and is. And he's also suggested Laura Coates, who is a legal analyst who's on uh, CNN. He <laughs> he has suggested, is what you're saying. So he does he have... suggested both of them. And and I'm assuming Tre- Trebek at this point, it's really the show. But, you know, is it... Does his suggestion really have anything to do with... Well, with who they actually the show pick. as being the on-air person, I don't know if he's going to still be like an executive producer. I'm sure he will. I mean, it's it's got to be him at this point, right? I mean, he's been yeah. on it for so long. I just wonder if it's like whoever takes out because Jeopardy is a fun show. I mean, even after all these years, it's still entertaining. Yeah. And Jeopardy. Does Tre- but, right, right. Does Trey Beck make it make it entertaining himself? I mean, sure, they could get another host who could be decent. They, they um, can get another host to replace Trebek. Trebek took took a while. I'm a little older than you guys. It took a, a while for Trebek to settle into the role. Uh, and honestly, because like for the first couple of years, seriously, he was not Trebek like now. He didn't see, he, he wasn't as smooth. He, had the he, he, was, he, he wasn't as, he wasn't as glib. He wasn't quite as funny. Well, um, because there were those times he missed and Ron Jeremy actually filled in for him. So that, those were excellent episodes and the categories were amazing. Uh, the, but Trebek is not – he's the star of the show, but the, the star of the show is the format and, it's, it's and the guests. And it, 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 well it's, said. Right. It, it will be fine without Alex Trebek. And I'm not knocking Trebek because Trebek is great in that role, and he really developed. I mean, he, he's terrific. He's like – to me, he's the best game show host ever, and that's kind of like – maybe seems like faint praise, but it isn't to me. I mean, that take, it takes a really special skill to do that. No, and I think that I think what you're trying to say is he doesn't try to, even though he really he is in control of that show at this point in his career and the and career of the show. The point is he doesn't try to make the show about him. He's still no, yeah. 
carrying Absolutely. the show, which is whole, the whole point of a game show host in the first place. Of course, right, because the contestants should be the stars and the format is the star, and, and he enables that beautifully. Uh, some suggestions that are out there, with, these are not Trebek's, but like Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper's not going to do it because he's making too much money doing what he's doing. And, and a serious role, he, Rachel Maddow. He's a Vanderbilt. He thing. could do whatever he wanted to. He doesn't have to do anything. He could just that's you know, true. have people show up to Biltmore and make money. And Laura Coates does pop up on this again. So uh, I, it'll be really interesting to see how they go. But I wouldn't be a bit surprised to find to see that it's someone no one has ever heard of. Because Trebek, he was he was on other game shows, but Trebek wasn't exactly a, a household name when he took this thing over either. So give it to Ken Jennings. <laughs> that's a, that's a possibility. I like the idea. What if you just cancel the show? I mean, well, does it really have to go on? I mean, I not, know it, it's, it makes it, them a ton it's of not, money. It's it, not it his show. Make them. I, 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 well, but at this point. It, it kind of is, though, isn't it? I mean, isn't he no. like the executive producer and really isn't it his show? I mean, he might be an executive producer. He's not the owner. I mean, that's a Merv Griffin production thing. Although Merv has been gone for like 20 years. That's Yeah, the, exactly. That's my point. Yeah. Merv Jr. So, yeah, so he's he's the, it's not his say whether they would cancel. And there's no way they're going to. I mean, it's making way too much money. Maybe. He's really the Al Davis of the show. And what happens when you hand it over to your son? You get, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we know what happens. <laughs> Very note, true. And on that note, I think I'll tell you to tune in Friday to the review show, and we'll see you next week for more news, of which there will be more and stuff. Captain, we're losing power in the warp engines. I think we should be leaving now. I'm going to go home and sleep with my wife. Uh, and on that unusually harmonious bombshell, it is time to end. I am very disappointed. Man, we have a weird job. It's shameful, but uh, eh, it's a living. And like that, he's gone. Dorn, that's the end. <laughs>